Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with some more Pokemon Nuzlocke today. We are going to... W burp. That's right, everyone. I want you to look at the TV screen, or wherever you're watching this, uh, and burp at the screen. Alright, now that I assume you've done that, we're gonna go fight Sabrina and this old woman. Ah! Would you like some cookies? Oh god! <laughs> She's possessed by demons. Mmm, drowsy. With his psychic hands. It still kind of looks like drowsy is like... I think I've mentioned this before, that he kind of looks like a rapper. Kind of putting his hands up. Oh no, the battle of the headbutts. You are too weak. You don't have the pink bow. Critical hit. Down you go. Punk ass. Yep, no. Headbutt. Oh, I just realized this is now gonna be a. Oh, it's a battle of the sexes, too. Whose headbutt is stronger, male or female? The answer is male, but only because I'm super stronger than her. I have over 10 levels on her, so. That's just the way the cookie was gonna crumble no matter what. I need to remember, I need to put Quetz in the front. Strong! Far too strong! Ah. Take that, old woman. I need to get Quetz to her final form, which is a Dragonite, so... Oh, I see it clearly. You can't see my soul. Medium Doris. Sent us. Ooh, my Legends Adventure is reset, so I have to very quickly look at those and actually go forward. Man. Uh, I should say, just because I've only now realized that I haven't really been talking much, um, including the last video, the reason is, is that I'm... At this point, we're so close to the end game where I'm just kind of going like, alright, let's finish this up. I'm close to being done, baby. Ain't no time for small talk anymore. But I'm... <laughs> um, let me actually talk now that we are going through this. Uh, so I recently rewatched Django Unchained, which I think I've said... I don't know if I've said specifically in this series. Um, maybe one of my favorite Quentin Tarantino movies. Not my exact favorite, but pretty close. If I had to think about it, maybe number two? I think it's his coolest movie, and I've had... Uh, an argument at work before over whether or not um, Inglorious Bastards or Django is more cool. Um, both of them are about killing racists, but it's in a different... I feel like Django is a very different kind of cool compared to Inglorious Bastards. Both of them are equally cool in their parts, but I feel like there's a certain bravado in Django, and I pronounce the D even though the D is silent, Django. There's a... Um, there's a certain just cool level through it that does not exist. Like there's, um, it all there it obviously uh, it obviously exists in Glorious Bastards. I already made it to Sabrina. What? No, I want to fight more dudes. After this guy, I'll actually go fight her. Um, ooh, let me go here. Uh, but I love Django. It's uh. Psychic Jared. I'm trying to look at my freaking adventure thing as well in, in Legends while also fighting. Ah, Mr. Mime, I can take that down easy. Um, I don't know, there's just always been a... It radiates cool more than any of his other movies, I feel. Um, but it's a very different kind of cool. I've been saying the same thing over and over again, so I hope that it's coming through. Um... I love both Inglorious Bastards and uh, Django Unchained. I just really love watching, but I can watch Django Unchained over and over and over again, and I can't do that with Inglorious Bastards. For some reason, Inglorious Bastards to me is much more of a um, hard to watch in terms of the pure suffering, even though there's equal amounts of suffering in um, uh, in Django Unchained. Yeah, why am I like that? Now that I think about it, I'm trying to think about like what exactly is it about. Very weird to think about now that I kind of rationalize it in my head. 
to the point where I'm like, I can't comfortably talk about why I think that, just because I think it touches on too many issues that are um, in our world today, I suppose. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, Django Unchained. If you've never seen Django Unchained, you should still watch it. I think it's maybe Jamie Foxx's best movie in general. Actually, is that true? I'm trying to think of some other Jamie Foxx movies. That's the one I would point to and think, like, that's Jamie Foxx. Um, quintessential Jamie Foxx. The only other role I can think of as being equal to it is when he played Tony Blair in The Chappelle Show. Which is maybe one of the funniest uh, cutaways. It's in the Black Bush sketch. Where he's uh, he's doing the Black Bush. He goes like, and now I have England. And I'm right here with Tony Blair. And then it cuts to <laughs> Tony Blair, who is a black Tony Blair. And he's played by uh, Jamie Foxx. And it's the fucking funniest um, cutaway ever. I, it still sticks with me. The other funniest uh, thing of acting I've ever seen is Jamie Foxx at the EA um, stream. For when they did Battlefield 1, I think. It was like a, a celebrity a celebrity tournament, and he was in there, and he was very clearly like, yo, I'm about to go get high, and I think he was actively high on stream. Uh, it was really funny. To the point where I was like, yeah, he doesn't want to be here, because no one actually wants to be here. I mean, there was people who were generally loving the game, like uh, Terry Crews and... Um, Terry Crews. I remember they cut to Terry Crews a lot, but he was just like, oh! Oh yeah, like doing, like hamming it up, obviously, but I don't know. He was having a good old time, and he's done a whole video series of him like making a PC with his kid. I think. All right, I think I'm good to just fight Sabrina now. Cut. Uh, go right here, and I'll switch to Butterfang if things get really bad. I knew you were coming. I had a vision of your right. Wow. She's been. She's all three years in my future. Him or herself. It's funny that she says that, especially since in gold and silver, you can't play as a girl. You can only play as a dude. Maybe that was a hint to Crystal. Hmm. I never did evolve Wong, which is a shame because Nightmare basically stole the fu the, the, his thunder. You bitch, that's my tactic! <laughs> Alright. Nightmare, you're gonna have to end this real soon because if she's gonna be using this tactic against you, we have no chance in hell. Headbutt. Headbutt into oblivion. Headbutt one more time. Okay, thank god she only did it twice. Uh, that means he should be not too bad off. But yeah, watch Django Unchained. Um, yeah. Never mind, I also really loved Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I thought it was a great movie. I really liked it. That's maybe the hardest I've ever laughed in a movie theater. Which maybe says more about me than it should. But there is one part where it just like 100% goes so balls to the wall. C crazy that it was so unexpected. The levels of... It's, it borderline turns into... No, I don't want to spoil it. If you haven't seen it, I'm not going to spoil it. Because any the the comparison that I was about to make about what it reminded me of would have completely killed any. It would have ruined the surprise, I think. But the ending of the movie is very, I guess, <laughs> different from the rest of the movie in, in certain ways. Or maybe it, but it also like builds up to it the entire time, which is me being very vague about the entire thing about everything. But uh, I switched to Butter Thing because I was getting tired of this Mr. Mime and his fucking nonsense and his dodging my headbutts. Eat the body slam. Punk. Um, but yeah, it was so good. And then the ones I don't, the ones I like least, um, in terms of Quentin Tarantino's filmography, um, I really don't like Death Proof. I really like the, the one character in Death Proof, which is Kurt Russell. I really like Kurt Russell in Death Proof. I think he's a scary ass villain. It's a damn shame he was not in a better movie. Um, to apply his craft. It also comes down to me just like not giving a shit about like uh, I, I really do like a lot of Grindhouse type movies but the car specific ones I have never had a single interest in. Just like zero interest in any of that kind of stuff. Mm. Hello Alakazam. I'm, I'm afraid that you might kill my Butterfang so I'm going to use a lemonade. Sip the lemonade Butterfang. 
interesting how much Psychic does. And then the other one about... Oh, oh that was a critical. Okay. Well, now I need to see what it does when it's not a critical. Because it's not always going to be a critical. Use the Hyper Potion. Here we go. The other least favorite is, um... Hateful Eight. I really don't like Hateful Eight. Um, probably for... It's a, for a lot of reasons. One, I think it's kind of boring. And two, Mexican Bob just ended up being... How people felt about, specifically, Bruce Lee, I guess, in... It's funny that I saw a lot of people, like, saying, like, Oh, he really underutilized Bruce Lee. I was like, where the fuck were you guys when he was using Mexican Bob? And he used that actor, and he... <sighs> I mean, Mexican Bob is not as well-loved as Bruce Lee, and also Mexican Bob is just a side character, but it was maybe the most... the most unpleasant character as someone of Hispanic ever. Because the fucked-up thing is that I know for a fact that he's calling into attention the fact that those characters exist. Like, if you watch any of the old, um... um... Western movies, you'll know that character. It's the Hispanic man who's just, like, kinda dumb, and he's going... Hey, I don't know what we're going to do. And he's kind of like fat, and he's drunk, and they, they exist almost everywhere. They're the comic relief in a lot of westerns. Um, that's a thing that happened for sure. There was a lot of asshole people who said like, "No, the right Mexican should have this role." Um, so I understand that specifically to call back to other westerns, he added a character like that into his movie. The thing that always rubbed me the wrong way was like, I feel like you could have just. Like, it was like, usually when he brings in a reference from a movie that he loves, he does something with it to make it feel, I guess, different. And there was no real difference in him. He was just literally straight up a racist character of, of a Hispanic person. Which is like, it's not like I'm thinking like, oh, he did it because he feels that way. No, he's not doing it because he feels that way. He's doing that way because that's how they were in those movies. So there's a certain level of just like, keeping it canon. Stupid fucking Alakazam, are you serious? That's why no one likes you, Alakazam. I should bring him back fucking... Actually, I don't know. I really don't trust the idea of Alakazam potentially knowing Shadow Ball, which would ruin my life and nightmares. Uh, let's see. Yep, woke up. Got out of bed. Brought the comb across my head. Let's see, regain health. Okay, snore. Psychic. Damn, was that another fucking crit? Jesus, I don't think Butterfing can survive another. go through, obviously. Oh, he's so close to dying, though. Alright, fuck it. I'm bringing in Nightmare. I mean, I should just let Butterfing finish this off. Oh, fuck. That was the wrong... Oh, no. That was the wrong press of the button. Oh, thank God. Oh, well, now that he's using Recover. I think I'll switch. At this point, I have to, because now I've wasted a Hyper Potion. I think he'll be fine. Okay, let's see. Yeah, Sabrina's a real pain in the butt, specifically because I don't... I hate fighting Alakazams. Alakazams are... I forgot you only have three left. You gotta make these headbutts count, my boy. Fuck. Mm. Mm. One more. Okay, it's gonna use recover because he can't use a hyper potion anymore. I think. Headbutt. Okay. Shit. I'm out of head. 
buds. He's gonna recover again, so what I'm gonna do is swap into Butterfang. After I heal Butter. I heal Nightmare so we could just in case he got another crit off the of psychic. My dogs are barking. Is it another drug dealer outside or are they just excited for the match? It's a good question. Questions that will never truly be answered. I can't remember how many terms. You know what? I'm tired of. Oh, he doesn't have any more moves. This is it. Yeah, this is it. He doesn't have any more moves. Why are the dogs going so crazy? He's out of moves. We literally stalled out so hard, he has nothing left to fight me with. Why does he keep feeling? That kinda hurt. Alright, Butterfang. Do your butter stuff. I guess I forgot that Psychic only had 10. Even though it is the strongest psychic move, it has the lowest PP of anything. Come on. Kick his ass. He has no way of defending himself against the constant body slams I'm about to leave on his person. Now he really doesn't. Bye bye. Bye-bye. And that is all she wrote on that one. Dun-dun-dun, dun-dun-dun. Considering she's now seen herself lose twice to the gym leader, to um, the trainer previously, and me, she should really learn that her psychic powers can't actually be held accountable to anything. Alright, next is, I believe, Blaine. Then after Blaine, we can go fight, um, Dokkan. And then after Dokkan, all that's left is, uh, Cam. So alright, that's the end of today's episode, especially since my dumbass fucking dogs are barking now. Thank you for everyone for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one as we get closer and closer to the end of the series. It's coming up soon. I can feel it. All right, everyone. Goodbye. There's a stop record button.